wakamita nikapatiwa drink toza soda na ilikuwa soda ya sprite lakini ilipatiwa kwa kwa glass uh, so after taking that soda and i don't know what happened from there i only came to realize that uh, the soda was a bit end when i found myself in hospital after, after 11 days and they said down on me that actually my elder brother sedated me and i was raped senseless oh, no. starting with him and his friends i am at the middle of nowhere but now it has down on me that i don't have parents nobody even knows my mother mm-hmm. my biological mother nobody knows my biological father i do not have relatives mm-hmm. and these people that i thought are my relatives are, abu- are abusing me sexually so i cannot live with them yeah. i'm 16 years years old remember instead of these parents being remorseful like nimekosewa sasa hapo ndio story yangu ilianzia unajua uliokotwa ukaletwa kwetu huyu si brother yako nafaa kumsamea oh so nataka kukuonyesha vile mm, wamekusaidia sana yeah. wakikana wewe oh, yeah, hata tukaona hata tukaacha usi tumekusaidia umefika hapo tumekulinda hakuna mtu amekuhamu sasa usikuwe na bitterness hata atunge mind hata akuoe because you are disciplined you are hard working wewe ni msichana mzuri atuwahi kupata na makosa Hello Tuko family. Welcome to today's episode of Tuko Talks. My name is Anya Thira and today I am joined by this lovely lady who has an inspiring story. Today I will let her share it with all. Kindly introduce yourself. Uh, thank you Anya Thira for hosting me. My name is Gladys Gaki from Meru County, but currently I'm in Taraka Nidi County, mm-hmm. Taraka University to be specific. Uh, that is where I am studying now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unasoma nini huko? na soma nafanya I, i'm doing a certificate in criminology and security studies um, in my second semester so before we even come to where you are right now because i know you've gone through a lot mm-hmm. in your previous life mm-hmm. i want us to go back to the very beginning mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about your childhood well uh, i was born in meru county in 1978 20, uh, 22nd of august uh, For reasons better known to my mother, yeah. she, uh, she gave birth to me very early in the morning, around 4:30 4, 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. And then she decided to dump me in River Kadita. River Kadita is a river that is in Meru town, some place before you enter into town. Mm-hmm. And I'm told that is where I was found. I was uh, an hour old and uh, I was wrapped in a towel and uh, where she had pressed me maybe she didn't want me to die because yeah. like like akunitupa kwa maji ile kabisa ni bebo na maji hadi niwekea kwa kwa, kwa jiwe and uh, ni place kuna kibukio place a place that people would used to close from one side of the of the town to, to the other mm-hmm. so it was strategic where mm. someone can see uh, where across yeah, the bridge yeah 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 okay and then in the morning around 5:30 am the morning some people just saw something that uh, was wrapped in a towel and there were, there were, there were, there were a movement TV. Yeah. and then this they decided to check what this was that is what they found me mm-hmm. i was alive it was not an abortion it was a normal uh, delivery uh, i was a child that was healthy so they took me to meru level 4 uh, level 5 hospital mm-hmm. uh, the nurses there received me my umbilical cord was intact so they did the normal cutting of the umbilical cord they cleaned me and there i was uh, for six months okay nobody came to claim a lost child or anything like that for six months and i was growing up so well i had no complications and then one of the nurses in that facility who attended to me decided to to adopt me you see in the early 80s there were no formalities for adoption like it is today okay like a child would be dumped and then somebody would pick up that child and grow up with that child without any uh, any formalities mm-hmm. so one of the nurses decided to to go home with me now that is where i found myself mm-hmm. in a family setup i had a daddy who was a police officer my mom is a nurse and two health elder brothers and another brother that was almost my age mm-hmm. and the last one now they did not they did not have a Uh, a daughter yeah so when i found myself there i thought these are my parents these are my brothers but i was i was as i was growing up 
and went to school, I started realizing this cannot be my parents because I was not being treated like the other kids. For example, uh, the other kids went to boarding schools, but I went to a public school. Yeah. During Christmas, eh, they would go out. They would go for a holiday for like a week, and I would be, I would, I would be left alone at home. And uh, I was to tend to the cows, graze the cows, clean the house, do the household chores, uh, as early as 10, 11 years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I kept asking myself why I'm, am I, why I'm not being treated like, like the rest. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not take my meals in the, in the dining table. I was supposed to take my meals in the kitchen. I'm the one who was cooking, but then I would serve the food, take it uh, to, the, to the dining table, and then get back to the, to the kitchen and take my meal from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a lot of fear that was, was instilled in me when I was a young child, so I could not ask questions. Uh, I would be threatened by by my dad. Like uh, I, he, would, he would shout at me when he was around. You know, as a child, sometimes I would go and play with other kids. Yeah. And then he would call me. Wewe unakubanga na kazi ingine, uh, ama ni kucheza tu. Spendi ujinga kwa wangu. Like, he would, he would just shout at me and he would not even shout to the other kids. Yeah. And then I was so, I was so, uh, I grew up with a lot of fear. And then uh, when I was alone, when I was in class six, I realized my brother was one month, one, was, one, was two months older than me. And we are not twins. Yeah. So I, I asked myself, how come my brother is we, we're in the same class, but he is two months older than me, so we cannot be twins. Definitely. Because my father was a kid, and I would ask around, I would ask my mother, how come my brother is older than me? Uh, is two months older than me, and she could tell me when you when when time that one one day I will tell you the truth about you, about yourself, but not now, and don't ask that question ever again. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I went to when I was in class eight, remember I I used to go to school like three weeks in a term. What do you mean three weeks in a term? Most of the times I was at home because I'm the house girl. Uh, during the planting season, because they had, they had so, be, so many shambas around, I was supposed to stay at home and cook for those people working in the shamba. Uh, when there is no work, there, there is no house help in the house, I would be the, the, house, the house help. Mm -hmm. So I went to school maybe a week or two weeks before the exam, but I used to perform. You see, that are inside the uh, are in boarding. Eh? So when, I, when we sat for KCPE, uh, I passed so well, despite the challenges. And uh, out of 700 marks in 1990, because I, I did my KCP in 1990, yeah. out of 700 marks, I earned 472. Wow. And uh, I think my record, around seven years ago, my record I was, I had not been broken. So you come in my wound, but seven years ago, seven years ago, I could Yeah, since Malaysia. Since Malaysia. Yeah. And then the community was celebrating me. They were so happy about my performance because they knew I was not being treated like like like, an, uh, like the other children yeah. and my brother who was in a boarding school failed now that is when problems started i was uh i was called in chogoria girls high school which mm -hmm. is a national school and uh you see the community is celebrating me the church is celebrating me everybody is so happy about what i've done but here at home it's like there's nothing i've done your foster parents were not excited yeah they were not excited that i have performed so well and then my brother had, had not performed so well so when it was time to go to form one see i already have been admitted at chogoria girls high school mm -hmm. now when i got to high school i was supposed to, to stay at home uh -huh. but i was supposed to stay at home so when i got to the school nothing is happening so i was supposed to stay at home I went to summer like like three weeks or or, or a month. Mm -hmm. There is a, a retired teacher who came home looking for for my mom, and then we kind of confuse and get. And it's time to inquire from the parents now. Because we are going to talk about the issue. We are not going to na 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 challenge ya ya pesa si mje kwa njia za church or as as mje tuko tunde changa. Sasa wakampe excuse. Sasa kuna yu mgeni tukua tunapeleka tukua tunapeleka mbrada ke. 
sasa pesa zikaisha tu na ngoja tuone vile itakuwa kwa hiyo mzee akawaambia nini kufanya hivi between leo na kesho mimi mm -hmm. mmefanya shopping mimi nitajua mali nitapata fees na mimi ndio nitapeleka shule wow he was a retired teacher so wakaenda wakanifanyia shopping hiyo siku tu ndio after mimi kabla nijipange tukona tukavanya shopping yeah. shopping ya kuguza guza we kuna vitu zingine hapa nililia hii simu tukiwa shule the following day mzee akanichukua na gari yake kala ndrova na kumbuka akanipeleka chogoria kwenda chogoria wengine wamesoma like a month mm -hmm. akaenda akaambia principal story yangu ile iko principal akanikubali tu mm -hmm. naambia hata niingie nisome na akaniuliza uko shule utakacha hapo nikamwambia nitakacha hapo akalipa fees nusu akasema hiyo nyingine wanaenda kutafuta nyumbani so nikaingia shule nikapata wengine hata wana prepare kufanya end of term mm -hmm. because we are almost closing so niko class i'm so confused i don't whether i take the notes or i start revising for end of term exams, exams. sina clue unajua high school sasa ni ile sasa unaenda system mpya you don't know uh, wamesoma mpaka wapi hata ukiamua kuchukua notes au hauna mtu wa kukuelezea but i tried i did not feel hata kama nilisoma for three weeks na nikafanya mtihani si kufeli nilipata c class mm -hmm. tukafunga shule tukaenda vile tulienda nyumbani sasa Uh, nikafika nyumbani nikaambia sasa hautaka hapa nyumbani yo already aipro sasa where, where my man my man had come from uh, was kwa sasa kwa kina mamangu mali um, alikuwa ametoka ndio yaolewe huko yeah. the mother now was ailing she was a home woman she was a, she was over 80 alikuwa na blunt pressure na alikuwa anaishi peke yake akaniambia sasa nataka uende kwa shosho wewe unakaa na shosho kwa sababu mara nyingine anakonjeka usiku na mtu aku akumtunga na mtu akufulia nguo ama kumpikia wewe enda ukae huko ikifika time ya kurudi shule tutakukujia tukupeleke wapi shure. shule so you already nikapeleka kwa shule sasa that was the end of the story mm -hmm. so second time hakuna mtu alikuja kuniongelesha hakukuwa na simu tukakawa wengine wamerudi shule nimeka ni man for two weeks shosho akaniambia wewe rudi kule nyumbani nikoja nikutafutie fia rudi kule nyumbani kwenu eh kwa sababu hata tukikaa hapa mimi sasa sina pesa ya kukupeleka shule yeah. usikie vile watakwambia So sio kwa nitafikia fia nikarudi kwetu sasa. Kurudi kwetu akaniambia sasa ni kama hiyo shule iko expensive sana hatutaweza. Mhm. Mm Wacha tukutafutia shule huko karibu na kwa na kwa shosho. Ufanye nini? Uendelee kusomea huko. Maana nika nikatafutia shule karibu na nyumbani hapo. Mm -hmm. A mixed school. Hizi shule za mashinani. Sasa nimetoka national school nimekuja shule ya kawaida hapo nyumbani. Tumeendea vitu chokoli ya Gausa High School. Hakuna competition. Mm -hmm. Unapata niko namba 1 lakini namba 2 nimemshinda na max kama 200. It's not competitive. It's in Kalilax. Because after all, I know Mindy otakuwa number. It's not about the performance, but sasa hapa hivi ni kama Mindy o mwalimu. Mwetu ndio number one. So ni Kalilax. Nika soma na charges wakati mungina na 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 tumo njivani kwa sabia fees na kaa njivani for three weeks. So ni kiwa kuda kwa shosho. Nime soma form one kutoka second term. Nime wenda form two. Sasa before nigia form three. Wakati ninge form 3 to yes kwa report form 3 sasa yeah. in 1993 January principal akanita kwa ofisi akaniambia mali school fees yako imefika balance atuoni kama tutaweza kukukeep tena niko mm -hmm. shosho ange, angeuza hata kuku apeleke 200 angelima mahindi auze mikembe 10 apeleke 100 so ikafika mali akalilia principal paka principal akaniambia mali fees balance imefika atuoni tukikoka shule tena yeah. so in 1993 January i'm supposed to be in form 3 sasa leo masomo imefika hapo nikarudi kwa wazazi wangu sasa nikaelezea vile kumekuwa akaniambia sasa itabidi ukakae hapa tukifikiria vile tutafaa kwa sababu hakuna pesa unaona hii mwingine tunamlipia now one, one day on a saturday was to malone my brother came home wako na drinks zao i think they had hardcore walikuwa na mira wakaka kwa nyumba mara naitwa tuletee coffee mara naitwa tuletee maziwa na wapelekea yeah then uh, at one point wakamita nikapatiwa drink toza sonda na ilikuwa sonda sprite lakini nilipatiwa kwa kwa glass uh, so after taking that sonda uh, i don't know what happened from there i only came to realize that uh, the sonda was sedated when i found myself in hospital after, after 11 days and they said on me that actually my elder brother sedated me and i was raped senseless oh, no. starting with him and his friends i am really sorry but i came to realize uh, again i gained consciousness uh, after 11 days 
And when I came to be, I was like, I saw everybody was crying. Everybody around was crying. Mm -hmm. There were people, women from our church were crying. Even the, nurse, the nurses themselves who were attending to me were crying. And then I was like, what happened? Mm -hmm. Why are they even crying? I'm, I'm, I'm not the end of my life. I started recounting what happened that fateful day. Yeah. And then I, every time I asked a question, I was told, please relax, take some sleep, what, what. But eventually I came to realize that uh, I was raped. I was sedated and I was raped. By your and brother. who raped me? My older brother. Mm -hmm. And even to make the matters worse, he did not even rape me alone. He raped me na kanyatilia kama rafiki zake. And now there I am. Uh, I was told that day uh, I was lucky to be alive. Because the, 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 that drug, whatever drug they put in that, they, they used to sedate me with, I think it, they overdosed it. And uh, I did not get, gain consciousness immediately. Yeah. And so they realized I could die. Mm -hmm. So they carried me from the house to the main house now and called neighbors in the evening around 7. See, the key and uh, uh, I'm going to an accident. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. So I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the And then when I was distanced, I said, I'm not going back there. So the wife to the level end of the church that I was attending decided to take me with her. Because mm -hmm. I was counseling, I was so depressed. So uh, I had to go to, some, to, uh, to stay with somebody who would counsel me. And you were in so much pain. I then. was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. I could not understand. I stayed with the level end's uh, house for two weeks. And then one evening they came home. This brother was done this, my father and my mother. And the the second one now. Yeah. Uh, we, had, we were told I was supposed to prepare a meal uh, uh, for lunch, but I was not told who the guests were. So the guests and my parents were coming for me, together with this guy who did this. Who abused you. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we had our meal. I was all, all along, I was crying, I was feeling so bitter. And then that is now where my story came. Uh, that, that is where now my story came in. Mm -hmm. uh, Instead of these parents being remorseful, like nimekosewa, sasa hapo ndiyo story yangu ilianzia, unajua uliokotwa, ukaletwa kwetu, huyu si mradha wako, unafaa kumsamea. Oh, so unataka kukuonyesha vile mm, wamekusaidia sana yeah. wakikana wewe. Wewe unaletwa hata tukaona hata kuacha usi, tumekusaidia, umefika hapo, tumekulinda, hakuna mtu amekuhamu, sasa usikuwe na bitterness. Hata atunge mind hata akuoe because you are on discipline, you are hand working. When I'm standing, I'm sure that you are not going I'm listening, eh? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, did you guys? I did not ask them, but I asked myself, did you guys have to wait until I was abused sexually so that you can tell me I'm not your daughter? Did you even have to wait? And second, even if I was supposed to be married, even if it was marriage or it was whatever, mm -hmm. am I supposed to get married to somebody who has raped me? So I was told, forgive him and let's go back home and organize how we can go back to school. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Well, we went home that evening, we prayed and then we went home. There's a time uh, my dad would come home and find me alone, maybe in the kitchen or in the sink washing utensils or some place where I'm alone and he would touch me so suggestively. And now I realized this is what my brother has done. So this still, this is what my dad has always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Because he would come, touch me, touch my breast, hold me very tight and like ask me questions like eh hey, umekuwa mkubwa umekuwa mrembo hii urembo wako utapeleka wapi ah uh, na alafu na ni threaten unajua na huyu is a police officer mm -hmm. na kuna ile fear niliyo yako ni kuwa mtoto angeniambia if you happen to to mention to your mother like i didn't anything or i touched you mm -hmm. I will kill you. So he has instilled that fear that in fear. you so that you don't share uh, with anyone what you're going yeah. through. And then every time he could come home, I was like, I don't even want to see him. I was so afraid. Because now we are going to be Fortunately, I could not tell him because now we were going to be able to do it. Fortunately, I could not tell him Every time he was at home, because I was going to be able every time he was at home, mom was around. Mm -hmm. So na mimi sasa wakati mama karoo na jifanya ni kumbi, na, na, na kikisha na mavoid. Lakini angepita tu anipate mali ni kopeke yangu, lazima angeniguza. Mm -hmm. So nika link up sasa hii ya bila mbila dhangu wa menifanya na mamangu kumbe alikuwa nataka, all along wa mekua kitaka kunifanya. 
I felt like this is not where I want to be. After kutoka kwa kwa Leveland, ye usiku nilitoroka nyumbani at 3 a.m. with a night dress and slippers and a leso. Unaenda wapi? I am at the middle of nowhere and now it has down on me that I don't have parents. Nobody even knows my mother, mm-hmm. my biological mother. Nobody knows my biological father. I do not have relatives. Mm-hmm. And these people that I thought are my relatives are, abu- are abusing me sexually. So I cannot live with them. Yeah. I'm 16 years old, so I don't remember. Now I walked out of that gate. I don't know how I managed to cross another river that was there. Or I managed even to, to pass a forest that, that is there. At that time, there was no electric fence like it is now. Mm-hmm. We used to see elephants even pass by. Mm-hmm. And I passed through that forest. I landed in a homestead in the morning. I had walked like 12 or 14 kilometers around that. And in the morning, I landed in a homestead. I'm so tired. I was worn out. And then saw a gate that was opened and I entered. Kufika pala nikapata kanyanya kaze yako around 90 years. Nikakapata. Kaka niona na tetemeka ni asubuhi kitu 6 na sasa niko na kanai tres kuna vile na tetemeka hivi sijava hata vizuri mm-hmm. niko na tu slippers miguu imefura nikadambia karibu nikusaidia aje nikamwambia story fake kwa sababu ninge, ningetaja mahali nimetoka au was afraid nitarudishwa huko yeah. na kule sasa nilikuwa nimemaliza na kwenyewe nikamwambia mimi nilikuwa nimekuja hapa kutafuta kazi house girl sasa yule alikuwa anipatia kazi siku nikufika hapa siku siku, siku mpata and then vijana wengine wakanikimbiza usiku wakachukua mba akachukua bag. Yaka nauza kuna kitu kingine walikufanyia nikamwambia hapana nilipika ndugu watu wakakuja. Mm-hmm. So like wanted, she wanted to know whether nilitipiwa. Mm-hmm. Tanaambia karibu karibu. Akanipatia chai. Akanionyesha mali ya kuoga, nikaoga nikakasetro. Akanambia mimi naishi hapa peke yangu na mzee wangu to hold people. Mhm. Na Iron Wood tukusaidia aje. Maybe ukae na sisi. Weekend kuna kijana yangu anakuja ndo akikuja tujue vile tutakusaidia. Takusaidia. So the one kijana came, wakapata, nimefanya kazi kwa hiyo mboma, nime clean, nime clean kwa ngombe, nime clean kwa kuku, nime clean paka kwa barabara. Haka shindo kwa wani hapa kuna, kuna event gani, mm-hmm. wila dipata kuku clean. So that's, uh, that's where now wakani accept in that homestead, nikaka pare for seven years. Mm-hmm. Nikuwa na, na kaa na kashosho. Mm-hmm. Na hapo sasa ndiyo nilifikishia miaka 18, nikachukua ID card. Na kwa sababu walikuwa nanjipa pesa kidoka, I think 400 or 600 around that amount, mm-hmm. I, was, I, I was able to save some money. Yeah. Because now I want to settle on my home. Na wano liku na hile bita na isi ya vila nilifanya. Mm-hmm. Uh, later, the, 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 the husband died. Uyo mzee sasa wa hiyo mboma alikufa. Tuka baki na shushu pekee Grace. Kwa kana Grace, na ya takufa. Sasa vila alikufa, kwa sababu wa thoto wanaishi mbali mbali na Europe na wapi. Hakuna mtu nyumbani, so I, I could not continue staying there. So your time ni kwa na pesa ni kwa ni save 48,000. That was uh, I think 2004 around that. Kwa ile kazi ulikuwa unafanya huko nyumbani. Eh. Sasa ni ama hapo nikula nimeenda place nyingine inaitwa Ngogo. Nikaenda nikaambia nikaanzia biashara ya hoteli. Mhm. Ika peak vizuri sana. Ika peak vizuri nika extend mpaka nikakuwa na side ya restaurant nikao ninauza kuna place kuna club kuna place kuna nyama choma kuna wow. place kuna Monda ni kinyozi, mm-hmm. nikapata pesa, nikaanza kuwajiri watu, nikakuwa sonko. Watu wa mbantu wanakuja hapo, mari, uh, nikuwa na kaunti ikwete, wanakuja, wanambia, kisi ukuja, tikupe loni, sujuu nunuwe gari, sujuu nunuwe shamba, na wambia, ni mambo maru, mambo na loo, mwete ni safe pole pole, yeah. pesa ikitosha, because sipendi kudaiwa, pesa ikitosha, ni nunuwe shamba yamu, nijia? Njenge. Nidikuwa nime safe safe pesa, mm-hmm. nikiwa hapo kuna mama naya, nikuja mama mzela fiki yangu, please, nikuwa naenda kununua vitu, nikuwa naitua zipe. Kuja kanipatia forma kanambia nataka unisaini hapa. Nienda siyui nichukue pesa kudogo bank. Uh, nilipa na one month. Ilikuwa December. Nipareke ni surprise shule front mattress. Then nikuje niku. Nilipa January niki surprise. Mimi na ujinga yangu sinanga. Sina, sina idea loan inaendanga aje. Sivi kungaranta mtu nikusema aje. Na account yangu iko clean. Mm-hmm. Nika msaini ya na nika mpatia potokopia indi. Mama alienda kachukua milion moja. Na kalipa instrument mbili na katoroka. Na kalenda saunda rivi. Mm-hmm. Wacha ni baki sasa ni after kitu three months hivi na pigua simu na manager wa bank. Ebu kuja bank. Ni kalenda bank, ni kalenda kanita, ni kalenda kwa ofisi ya kanyambia. Unajua uh, mtu wako alienda wapi, ni kamuliza mtu. Kwa hata nilisa kama kuna, kuna biya sala tulifanya na zipe. Mm-hmm. Mi hata sikumbuki, mtu yupi zipe. Sia kwa kwa shop yake. Mi napita na kwa shop naona. Vitu ziko pare vile likuwa naeka mama tesu na mitungi utenso sapo inje ziko. Kumbi aliuza biashara ikiwa vile hata uzia mtu mgini. Elie buwe enda uangadia kama yuko. Nikaenda hapa very confidently. 
nikapata mwanaume nikamuliza uko wapi zipi eh zipi alienda na alinunulia biashara ikiwa tu venye iko yeah. sasa license angalia mimi ndio nimekata na jina yangu naitwa Mwangi mhm wa nikarudi sasa kwa manager kwaambia ni kama alienda simu yake ni mteja unajua mimi sikuwa nampigia hiyo time nyingine lakini wakati sasa nimeambiwa hivyo nikaanza ku nakuwa na wasiwasi nikaanza kumpigia mm-hmm. akakuwa mteja nikamwambia kambia sasa unajua ikiwa ipo mtu analipa kama ni wewe umengalanta itabidi ulipe loan au nao alikuwa analipa au match si kwa tayari tao send watu watu lakini kwa sababu gani ngalanta tutakusplendia loan ulipe for a long time and the least unaweza lipa part time sasa mhm part 6800 na nilipa hiyo loan for kitu eight installments na profit yenyewe na make kwa biashara yako biashara savings sasa zimeenda Unajua sasa okay biashara ina run but sasa every month nikilipa hiyo that 6000 inatoka pale. Si unaona biashara inaenda chini. Na no, kuna mahitaji yako pia. Eh, savings zikaisha. Mm-hmm. Sasa nikaanza kuuza uza tu. Nikafika mahali nikaanza kuuza vitu zangu. Napata nimeuza microwave, mm-hmm. mara nimeuza nini? Biashara imeenda chini sina stock. Mm-hmm. Then nilikuwa naenda sokoni na nunua mbuzi kama 10 na kuja niweka hapo na nakuwa na, na, na kichinja. Ilifika mahali ikawa sasa naenda nakopa nyama butchery kwa mtu wa butchery ndio nisifunge kazi. Yeah. Na pika jioni na naenda na, 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 na nikakuwa depressed. Wakati mwingine nafika siku ya kulipa naenda kujificha na zima simu naenda kujificha kwa msitu. Wanakuja wanazunguka huko wananikosa. I was so depressed. Then one day I decided in office in office start to for the rest of my life. Yeah. Nikapigia yo Gibson, nilikuwa naishwa Gibson. Kamwambia Gibson mimi nimefika mwisho. Sasa watu wote wameanza hata nyumba siwezi lipa, wafanyikazi wameenda sina stock. Ngapi to do now? Mimi nimefika mwisho. Bila mnafanyaga mtu akifika mwisho, nataka mfanye saa hii saa hii. Sasa and even started abusing drugs. Nilikuwa nianza hata kuvuta bangi hiyo time sasa. Nimefika yani mahali nataka kuvuta bangi nataka kulewa all along hata kama nilikuwa nauza pombe sikuwa na kunywa lakini hapo sasa mahali kumefika mambo ya kulipa lipa loan nikaanza hata kukunywa pombe. Nikaanza mm-hmm. nikachukua nika pombe nikakaa kwa uwanja mahali kwa field kama hapa. Asubuhi saa 2 nikaanza kukunywa kukunywa pombe yangu. Kio hapo nikaona lori imekuja pick up na personal. Gambia Gibson fungua ndizo hizi. Kutoka store kwenda mali wafanyikazi wanaralanga hakuna nyumba nimefunga chukueni vitu zote muende nilikuwa na plastic chairs na tents za kukodisha kwa vile nje hivi nilikuwa na location nilikuwa mm-hmm. na, na, na chairs 400 na tents nne zote wakaanza kuweka kwa lori eh wacha watu wa vilinja sasa wapige nduru wanauliza ni nini inafanyika mbona mnabeba vitu za za za, za, za kivi sasa bila wanauliza hivyo kuna mzee alikuja hapo mpaka na title deed. Nikamwambia na kupatia title deed huyu msichana asiishi amekuwa na mimi nilikuwa nasimama na watu sana, ma occasions wakiwa na ma events nilikuwa nawasaidia sana. So huyu mzee akasema nataka kuwapatia title deed muende nayo, muache tubaki tukisubiri mtu atalipa loan. Nikamwambia huyu mzee mimi si kiwete atinichangiwe. Yeah. Kaa na title deed yako. Mikono iko, akili iko, miguu yangu iko. Bila nilianza nikafika hapa. Nitaanzia pale hizi vitu si zangu ni zao. Wacha wabebe. Yeah. Na kuambia wakabeba kila kitu nikabaki nika sasa sina anything sina fridge sina, sina anything mm-hmm. nilikuwa nimenunua vitu nilikuwa na vitu kwa sababu nilikuwa na kaa nyumba ya tumbentu mm-hmm. wakabeba kila kitu nikabaki hivyo sasa that is the day i decided i, I, I must die now because biashara imeisha basi hiyo ndio ilikuwa tegemeo yangu i don't have a place i can call home sasa vile mtu eh, kazi ikiisha na rumbi nyumbani sina nyumbani kwa kurundi mm-hmm. sasa niko hapo tu i can't even afford to pay my rent Yuhu siku nikakaa hapo nikalewa nikaenda nikalala hawakubeba kitanda waliniachia kitanda usiku nikatoka nikachukua nika, nikachukua nikachukua kamba nikapanda kwa msitu wote wa walking distance na kwa sababu ndio nilienda nikajihang 2013 July the 11th that was the first time I attempted suicide mm-hmm. Fortunately I think God there's something God saw in me na kwa nataka nikufe. I look yeah. at myself to Ben and kaona chungu. Naona chungu Mungu kuna vile kuna there's something is so in me. I don't know miraculously how that kiblanche yenye nilikuwa nimejihangi ilianguka na nikakaa pale nimeumia nimevunjika mguu. Shingo ilikuwa na vinona. Hata saa hizi niko na sky natoka anga hapa mpaka kule chini. Mhm. Vile nilianguka kama miti huko. Asubuhi asubuhi kuna waze wanaendanga eh ku, kuweka mabia ifu hapo ndio watoe asari. Wakiwa kwa round zao wakaona mtu ameanguka hapo and coincidentally hiyo mtu nilikuwa nimejihang a few months before ni jang sasa kuna kijana mwingine alikuwa amejihang hapo na akakufa na sikuwa si najua kama ni hapo alikuwa amejihang lakini nilikuwa najua hiyo story mm-hmm. wakaona niko unconscious but niko alive wakaita watu wa Kenya police nikapelekwa OC nikakaa OC for 29 days kwa sababu hiyo vidonda zilikuwa miguu nikafanywa nikafanywa graft skin grafting 
finally nikapona. Yeah. But nikiwa OC bando nikiwa naambia hata nikitoka hiyo OC kirua hospital. Hata nikiwa naambia mwanadamu hata hata mkititi as long as nitatoka kwa hiyo hospitali nitajiua. Niliwasumbua. Mhm. But eventually uh, people came came in nikapelekwa therapy nikapelekwa uh, counseling. I was put on counseling for quite a while. Uh, na nika accept maisha. Sasa nikaanzia life hapo. Mm-hmm. Sasa 2014 uh, November nikaajiriwa tena. Sasa mimi ndio nilikuwa naajiri watu 10 na walipa mshahara, nikarudi kuajiriwa kwa mbaa sasa tena yeah. as a bamend. Mm-hmm. So nimekuwa bamend kutoka 2014 mpaka 2018 December. Na still nilikuwa na depression because every time I used to remember mwanzo kabisa niko na niko na niko na bitterness kwa sababu I don't know why my mother decided to dump me nishi maisha ya shinda. Mm-hmm. And then wale walinichukua siyo kwa nini walinifanyia vile walinifanyia nikiwa mtoto mdogo I was very innocent hakuna kitu nilikuwa najua mm-hmm. and then nikawa na phobia I could not date I could not look even at a man I could not even imagine myself in a relationship because I used to look in, at any man naona huyu ni shetani and I used to be very violent mm-hmm. paka nikanikininiwa congestion na polisi kwa sababu nilikuwa nimeshikwa mara kadhaa nilikuwa nimepigana na watu but uh, I came to realize by day that I was depressed and I was in bitterness na sijasamea wa watu because unless you forgive those people who about you with yeah. issue na hiyo bitterness. Mm-hmm. So sasa 2018 si nimefanya kazi sasa za Zambia kutoka 2014. 2018 mali nafanya kazi sasa na biashara yake imeisha. Hata yeye amefunga. Yeah. Nimeshindwa hata kulipa rent tena. Nikasema sasa nitaishi maisha kama haya for how long? Nimefungiwa nyumba, nianza sasa kufanya kibarua kuosha mbaa washa mbuchari na lipo shilingi 100 si 150 asubuhi naamka naenda kuosha ni kuosha mbaa ama hoteli ama buchari ah, then nikafika mahali nikaona this is too much sasa hizo nimefikisha nime miaka 40 miaka 39 sasa hiyo yeah. nafanya hiyo kazi i don't have a stable job uh, sijasoma i don't even have a family sina mtoto sina bwana sina anything nikajichukia sasa what do I, what do i have mimi sasa what, what can what can be attached to my name even if okay, at, at this age nini niko nayo so nikaanza sasa kujidhalau kaona sasa ile suicide nita, nitafanya raundi hii hata mwili wangu hakuna mtu ata, 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 ata nini maiti yangu hakuna mtu ataiona hasa hapo niliandika suicide note ile kali nikaiandika 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 story yangu yote kutoka kuzaliwa ndani nimepitia what have been through bitterness nini na nikaiacha kwa meza nika Ah nilikuwa nikula pesa ya kikundi kuna kachama tulikuwa naye hapo Kameri Ground. Mm-hmm. Sasa kwa sababu nimeisha nikamwambia nipatie ni savings zangu nyi, mimi nikipange. Nikapata 3000. Nikapanda matukalia matatu asubuhi saa mbili na nimeandika nimeacha mlango wazi na nimeandika suicide note. Mm-hmm. Nikatoka nikaenda. Alafu that week nilikuwa na post post vitu fani kwa Facebook. Na post na post me I'm so fed up with life. I want to head my life and then people were like what wanted to know what is hitting me up yeah there's this friend of mine by the name Millicent Morgan uh EMC wa Tharakanidi county she's a friend of mine uh, she used to follow up my stories na alikuwa wakati mwingine anakuja ananiambia Gladys you don't have to die uh, you are a beautiful girl ni nani ni challenge ananini wakati mwingine hata anipeleka out and I'm treat na hapo kwa protest yetu alikuwa anakuja mpaka tunarara na yeye so watu walikuwa namjua mm-hmm. so wakati sasa nimetoka nimeenda kuna mtu aliingia kunitafuta akapata mlango imefunguliwa na si kwamba kuna barua kipo hapa hivi kirefu akasoma na kuna namba ya Millicent akapigia Millicent sasa hiyo simu yangu iko off akapigia Millicent akamuuliza ume, umepatana na Gladys mahali hapana yeah. amekuja kwako hapana tumekuja kwa nyumba yake tukapata hii na hii na hii sasa wakamwambia ile ile story iko sasa hiyo wananipigia simu inakosekana na mimi sasa niamua kwenda kujiua mbali sasa niko almost embu nikashuka matatu mahali tu at middle of nowhere nikaambia uh, driver nishukisha hapo mm-hmm. sasa nikaanza kutembea nikitafuta place nzuri niko na sumu niko na sumu kwa hard bag na niko na, niko na ile dawa ya panya platrat na niko na kamba in case niko na place nzuri ya kujihang ni meza hii mahali unajua sasa huko embu hakuna mtu ananijua lakini yeye ile ile ya meru sasa ile ya chuka ile ya chogoda everybody knew me nikua pale kumbe mimi center mpigiwa simu anatoka Nairobi anaenda chuka kwa kwa watu watatu kwa gari yake. Mm-hmm. Si ana drive kuna mtu anamu drive na wako na msichana mwingine. Mimi na, napanda hiyo tuvo tu nikifikiri nikijaribu kuangalia place naweza jificha nifanye mambo yangu. Mimi sent ameniona pub kwa barabara. Mimi sent tu mwenyewe alikuwa Nairobi. Huyo ndiye anapeana nanga story mpaka analia. 
Sasa hivi amekuja akipiga simu yangu akiomba kiinglandesi asijue na atujue taanzia wapi kwa sababu ndio ashaambiwa na nisipatikani kwa simu. Mimi niona gari imekuja imesimama mbele yangu hivi nikama inataka kunikanyanga. Wa nikaona watu wamechomoka mbio nika sikwa nikarushanishwa kwa gari. Kumbe ni misent. Mm -hmm. Amewaambia sasa ndio yule 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 inglandesi alikuwa anatuniambia story yake. Nikarushanishwa kwa gari, driver kaambiwa turundi. Sasa tukarundi hapo tukaenda tukaingia kwa hoteli nyingine fulani hapo hoteli kubwa. Did you try to fight eh. them? I was, I was crying. I was crying because naona wananipotezea time. Sasa kwa hiyo hoteli tuliingia. Mm. Ni sense hivi kama aliongea na manager nikafungua kwa kanyumba na wakaenda na simu na andipa yangu na kila kitu miacho ni macho tu hivyo. Manager hoteli akaacha ameambiwa vile story yangu iko. Ni sense akakimbia Maria alikuwa anakimbia kwa hoteli kwa mkutano. Sasa naweka pale na letewa chakula, na letewa chai, na letewa drinks na ongeleshwa. Na mgoma tukupeleke kwa swim na mwambie I'm not in sense. Hiyo siku nilivia throughout. And then me sent came from for me in the evening kaenda kwa kwa mbaka kwa sababu kulikuwa naishi embu. Mhm. Mm Ndio amekuja na pastor wa kuniombea, amekuja na kansela, amekuja na marafiki sasa like unataka kunionyesha I belong to a group of people watu wananipenda. Yeah. Like I should not die. Sasa nikakaa pale kansela na kaa pale na mimi. Tuna na kelekwa out for two weeks sina simu, I'm not communicating. Lakini mimi sent na follow up vile tunaendelea kwa social media lakini aniambi, lakini kuna wale anaambia niko safe. So after two weeks after nime accept si uh, to hear kwanza you have to accept that you need your problem True. and you need help so if you come out and accept it anyway i'm not okay i'm mentally sick i'm not just okay i cannot repeat the same mistake na jiwa na jiwa na jiwa na jiwa and uh nikafungulia simu so nikapatwa watu wengi sana wamenitafuta inbox nini watu wengi gladys are you safe please don't do this don't do this i don't know for what reason nikaamua ku respond unajua wewe respond zote nikaamua ku respond message ya mama mmoja anaitwa Monica Kangebe mhm mm kumbe hata she is not in Kenya she, she is in Canada wakati ni respond hivi akaniongelesha alaka akaniambia i need i need to have your number nikumpatia namba akaniambia want to talk to you end up my silent na utaji sim vizuri nitataka kuwa na discussion na wewe that is the first person tangu nizaliwe kuambia story yangu sasa kutoka pale mwanzo pale kuzaliwa kutupwa red biashara kuisha yoyote sasa mm -hmm. and she did really cry I remember she cried she prayed for me we cried kwa simu tunalia mpaka simu inaanguka tunakota tunaendelea na story and remember she told me gladys uh, your life will never be the same again yeah. those ones i still remember them up today uh kadambia i want you to leave and you must leave yes hata mimi sasa nikaona nafaa kuishi mm -hmm. i'm not going to die nakaniuza sahi challenge uko naye kubwa ni gani kawaambia sijali talent sina chakula kwa nyumba sina anything nakaniambia rudi kwa nyumba yako and every morning nitakuwa nakupigia na kuambia hata ila chakula uta breakfast utakula ila lunch utakula na lunch utakula akanitisha namba ya landlord nikamtumia akalipa rent ya miezi mitatu wow akanitumia pesa ya chakula every day ana follow up mpaka ni mpaka ninakula nini alafu sasa kansela nilikuwa naenda kuona kansela every now and then me accept naona kumbe, kumbe kuna mtu ananipenda yeah. kumbe after hata nikupendwa nilikuwa nataka nataka tu kupendwa si kuwa na issue sana mm -hmm. Now Monica wanted to help me. Anajua sasa mimi ni form 2 drop out. How do you how do I help this girl? So you need to kisha miaka 40. Yoni 2019. Na kaniambia sasa niko Canada and uh, I hope one day nitakuja Kenya kuonana. But sasa imekuwa ngumu mimi kukuja. I want to connect you with a person who is around, who is in Kenya. Mwenye anaweza any time hata usiku kimuita hata saa ngapi ukimuita anaweza anaweza patikana. Yeah na haya kwa Mombasa na anaitwa Pastor Monica. Yule wa Canada ni pasta, nimekoneti na pasta mwingine anaitwa Mombasa, anaitwa Monica Moringe. Monica kanambia sasa tunataka kukusaidia Gladys tukusaidia aje. Ukupatia pesa uweke biashara au ndio. Ngambia mimi biashara I've tried it and it failed. Uh the only thing you can do to me now is keep me empowered like I can stand on my feet ni kusoma ni rudi shule. You wanted to go back to school. Yes. Ah. I mean that decision. Hata wao ndipo walikuwa nataka bacha wange ni suggestia because wanaogopa kuni hard. Unaweza ambia mtu mtu wa miaka 40 atirudi high school form 2. Unaona kama utamu hard. Already mtu wako depressed. Yeah. Mimi ndio niliamua nikamwambia nataka kwenda shule. Nikasikia amesema haleluya. Kumbe this is what they wanted. Sasa arrangement ya kurudi shule ikaanzia hapo. Mhm. Mm Yule wa, wa wameshikana huyu wa Mombasa na wa Canada. Sasa mimi narudi shule. Mimi ndio nilienda kutafuta shule and kasema siendi day school naenda boarding and what was pushing you to go to school i mean you could have opted to do business but you opted to go to school what no, was I that thing yeah. and ilikuwa inako push from the word go i wanted to i wanted to study ndio sasa nilikosa namna secondary 
kama ni biashara ni diweka biashara nikaanguka but i know ile na orange tayoko kwa akili yangu like yeah. nimesoma that is mine hakuna mtu atai auction at kosa ya loan that is mine unaelewa sasa True. i wanted something that is mine that is permanent ile kitu hakuna mtu ata chukua but biashara ni shike shike it is not so promising in isa peak in isa very powerful yeah yeah mm-hmm. so i wanted sasa an orange and then uh, kwa na an orange ni kwa that is mine so i went to school nikaenda nikaongea na principal ambaye pando ni pasta mimi nilikuwa nikitembea na mapasta ah uh, huyo pasta ambaye nipata pasta ambaye ni principal nikamwambia story yangu nikamwambia sasa kwa kuja shule aka akaongelesha walimu wengine kwaambia kuna mwanafunzi anakuja shule next week na ko hivi kizonda even that is kizonda the new i don't want you to treat us so well she has a story kwa sababu ile principal alishaye ndio ashaeleza story yangu yeah challenge ingine sasa nitakuwa nakaa wapi nikuwa nasoma kwa sababu sitakuwa naenda nyumbani holiday mhm mimi sasa sitakuwa naenda nyumbani nitakuwa nakaa wapi siwezi kaa kule kwa plot sasa nitafutiwa mahali pa kukaa nikaulizwa mahali na kaa kwa sababu wale ni pastors wa deliverance una ka please ile deliverance ya tiko karibu iko wapi nikawaelezea mm-hmm. so wakani connect sasa na pastors wa church yenye iko karibu na mahali nilikuwa naishi nao sasa wakawa the land people kwa mjia story yangu mm-hmm. so wakani kujia wale ni kona admission letter fee imelipwa sasa ni kufanya shopping na kwenda shule mm-hmm. hawa wamenikujia wamenitea mahali pa kukaa so ndio kundi wa nyumbani utakuwa unakuja ni pastor ni pastor na bibi yake wote ni mapastor hodi ndio utakuwa unakuja huko bedroom yako ni hii weka vitu vyako huko ukikuja nyumbani utakuwa unakaa huko finally niko na kwetu how did you feel that time you're going to school that was the first time i had somebody calling me my daughter and i was like so it a few so good to come to my daughter it was the first time at age 40 it is the first time nisikia babangu sasa huyu adopted father wa mwisho sasa akimita my daughter kwa simu umeamkaje my daughter mpaka naangalia simu ni mimi napigiwa kweli mimi naitwa daughter So it feels so nice mtu kuwa at least anaamka asubuhi anapata ana, ana mama tu ni mama huyu ni baba. And then watoto watoto au oh, mapastors wakaitwa kaambia tumepata mtoto mmemo accept ya watu wakani accept. Sababu mimi si mtoto anafungwa pampas. Yeah. Ni karudi form 3 March 25. Uh, ah shule ni toki ya Murio KTC at the border of Tarkanidi and Embu County. Kwenda pale amunda um, dande teachers class tita alikuwa 27 years old niko 40 mm-hmm. but it did, it did not bother me once once the prince kwa kanipatia mbo kwa staff quarters kwa sababu sasa akuna kama na isalara dormitory na watoto wa 14 years 15 sasa nikawa nacherwa kwenda class kwa sababu sasa kuna vile na isaenda class nilikuwa na rara peke yangu sitaweza kuamka for yeah. na naenda class napata wengine walikuja nika organize na matron kamwambia nitafutie mbendi huko kwa form 1 niweze kusoma after all i came here to stand kwani wananifanya ni watoto wangu yes lakini wananifanya hakuna kitu wananifanya ni wote mmekunza kusoma eh yeah. so tukachora na matron bila principal kujua nikaenda dorm na nikasoma it was fun <laughs> it was fun it was fun it was fun you, you, you can imagine i'm working up at 4 tuko na watoto wa 14 15 hapo tunapiga shower sanitation kawaida shule tunavaa tuna brush viatu tunaenda class what was your sasa wao uh, i played a very important role and nimetoa certificate shule i did the head toast girls counseling niliwafanyia counseling mm. see those students hata kama mimi ni mzee kualiko as long as I'm in uniform mimi sasa wanaweza niambia anything so guidance and counseling ya school ya walimu kuna story wangu yesa kuambia mwalimu but walikuwa wananiambia i have helped so many girls heal from depression wengine hata wameobvisua tu kama mimi na relatives they could they confide in me mm-hmm. and i helped so many girls mpaka nikakuwa sasa na attend cases jioni after classes mtu ana ni trust of hope. yeah And then they I finished ku watu walidia kutoka walimu because I really did wa shikilia mpaka walimu nilikuwa nawafanyia counseling wanakuja na my issues na wa, naongelesha najua really? ni walimu wadogo eh, kimiaka mm-hmm. awana hata experience kama ile niko naye so it was so fun uh, I was not molested I was not bullied I was accepted by the community watu walikuwa nakuja shule kuona huyu msichana kwa shule ako 40 years nikafanya mtiani I was supposed to sit for my case in 2020 but kwa sababu ya covid bila tulisukumu mbele nikafanya mtiani basi ya uh, March March to April mhm na ikatoka me and uh, you see I was out there for 26 years kutoka 1993 wakati I dropped out to 2019 yeah. so I was there out there for 26 years doing blah 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 I managed to get a grade B class mhm 
and I was so broken because I was so I was so broken because I was so broken I was so broken yes I was so broken 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 so I was so broken 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 like ni may perform according to them because I kuna vidani ngerundi shule after 26 years old ni pate kiko but deep down you feel like a failure yeah mimi mimi nasikia ni feel kumbe walimu wamefurahi wamaniteza wandi wamekuja po the whole school watu wa mindi wako pale wow yeah mm -hmm. glad this has finally amemaliza shule akona sad na hata hajaanguka the class ikuanguka so watu wa nation wakakuja nyumbani wakakava story yangu after that, that sasa nita accept nika wana kuwe ni kama kuna kitu nimefanya. Mm -hmm. Because there are those students wambawa walianzia kutoka ndi uh, bebe kia. Wak, na wajawai drop out. Na tumepata ngiri dimoja. Na wana kwa kwenye nguwa kuna di, kuna ngini mm -hmm. ato kuna hii. So nika accept, nika sema, I'm, I'm, I'm working with this D, D plus. Nga lazima ni achieve my goal. Yes. Ha, wakati watu wa nation walikuita waka cover story yangu. Wakati kwa kwa daily nation in June date 10. Date 10, date 10 I think. Ah, date 9. Watu wakaisoma. Taraka university, kuna mama anafanya raibla rinaitua Nancy. Akasoma yu stuli. Mm -hmm. And then she decided to look for this woman. Anapata B-plus. Eh. Anazia na certificate course. Because at the time, sata niko 41 at age 40. At age 41, kukaa nyumbani ati kungojia mpaka sivi ni hini anga kinyende sivi what. Yeah. Aita saindia. Akatafina na mdiyadu wakanipigia, kanyambia kuna intake ya, kuna intake ya me. Ata kama ni juni wetu utajua vila kutakufix ukuje wansi certificate haraka haraka na utapanda mpaka mahali ungetaka kufika. Sasa hiyo sina school fees na anything. Another destiny connector. Another destiny connector amepatikana hivyo. Yes. Look at what God does. Mm -hmm. uh, coincidental wakati hiyo ananipigia kuna mwingine anaitwa Joy Tum ako yo dolet ametafuta namba yangu through our to nation akaliza glandes sasa kwa sababu umepata hiyo grade you want to kumaanisha yani umeisha wewe uko sawa. Uko sawa mimi najua uko sawa umefanya the best umefanya the best. Yeah. Tafuta mahali ufanya kwa certificate. Nga wiyata urede nimepata, nikita saa sivu nita ingia aji. Kanambia wenda kusikuma wingie. Mm -hmm. Haka nitumia tenda usena, kanambia university uwezi kugusua fi kama secondary. Utaenda wingie usome, by the time ifike, mutiani ifike. Kukua tumia range na ambasari ni mimi. Kwa yeah. ambasari ni severo. Nikaandika paroza ambasari ni kipuleka various offices. Tikona tenda usena di angu. Nikona tukuku nilikuwa nimedisharisha hapo kwa, 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 kwa pasta gatea. Mm -hmm. Nikachukua kukuzangu, nikauza, nikapata 7,500. Nikajua hapo nikona nyumba. Kura shura wa nitafanya, uh, yu 10,000 nitaingia na yu ni kwa system. So, after two days, nilikuwa shure. Kuenda shure kumbe university nao, wametangaziwa, yu na msiyanu mburiona kwa ngazeti ya nakujia shure. Kuchoka kwa ngeti na kuambia kila mtu wananihagi. Oh, wow. <laughs> na nisipu ya kuripot. Like, inangwajua sijui kama nani. How did you feel? I felt like I'm going home. Everyone wanted to, to, to be associated with this girl. Naenda kwa finance na watu watu wananihagi. Nkila do karibu dharaka university. Yani, favor. Favor ya mungu God's favor. Eh, nikapata sasa klasi yetu wengine wamesoma for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. Lecturers waka take time na mimi sasa peke. Wananita njioni. Wananisaidia kukacha. Kukacha para karaka haraka. Waka nebea tumesoma apaka hapa. Tumesoma apaka, tumesoma apaka hapa. Vitu wata singu umu. Nikuna yunde, nikuwa, uh, semester wani nikuwa na yunde seven. Saizu nikuwa na yunde nine. Na kwa mjia nikasoma. Kwa nasa kufanya kati. Kati sini yato ovrate. Enye nikuwa nimeferu sana nikuwa na 21. Wow. Nikuwa pata 26. Mm -hmm. 24, 25 apo. Lecturers were so proud of me. Semester 1 ikaisha. Uh, took a break August kutoka date 20 paka, uh, paka September date 8. Mm -hmm. Semester 2 nikalundi. Bila pesa. But uh, niliweza kulipiwa uh, nyumba enye nakaka kwa sabu nakaka nyumba 3000 niliweza kulipiwa. Na well wisha. Naka nilipia mezi mwiri. Kukaka MCA nikaenda nikampigia simu nikamlipia nikamwambia nimeingia shule bila kitu bila kitu kabisa kanambia atupiani basa lakini nitakutafia yangu personal at least account is kai zero mm -hmm. akanilipia 7000 wow mm -hmm. so as we speak now niko na balance ya 23000 na time table ya mtihani imetoka mimi next exam tunafanya kutoka date 26 25 or 26 hapo na sasa siko shule kama nitafanya but kati nimefanya okay and glad is apart from now school fees I know you're going through a lot, but mm. what are some of the challenges in Unapitia at the moment? At the moment, we can study this because my upkeep in campus is stress. Uh, could you parent here 3,000 is stress because sasa ni mimi na ni mimi. Like, ni kama ni miachanisho na kila mtu, but 
I thank God because somehow nilienda nikaongea na lecturers and to speak to the dean of students nikamwambia exactly what I'm going through. Time mingine hata nilikuwa nimefungiwa nyumba. Kuna time nilikuwa nimefungiwa nyumba na Pantrona na nika nikalala nje. Kana nikamwambia yeye niko na challenge. Ah akaniambia kuna program ya shule yenye mtu akiwa nindi sana akiwa na issue kama hiyo yangu sasa wanamsaidia kulipa rent na pesa ya sandaka wakati kuna inter domination so kuna kuna i think august august or september i august ndo nilikuwa nimefungua nyumba ndini akaorganize when nikalipiwa rent hiyo mwezi basi sasa umelipiwa rent lakini kwa ile nyumba huna chakula so nikabini sasa niambia ma lecturers ukweli nikamwambia mimi already nina struggle hata kama mnaona class nina perform nina struggle so wakaniambia over the weekend watakuwa nikipatia kazi ya kufua nguo so saturday asubuhi na mkanga naenda kwa lecturer mmoja na kufulia nguo for kutoka asubuhi mpaka saa saba naenda kwa hiyo mwingine saa nane mpaka jioni kufua nguo na kufanya cleaning ya nyumba yote 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 sasa alafu saa naenda church nikitoka church saa nane naenda kwa mwingine so that is how i think so that is how i get food nikipata fundi kifika time ya kulipa rent naanza ku struggle apart from school fees bado niko na struggle za upkeep na nile sasa nimeamua i must write my story because my story did not start so well it did not start so well mm-hmm. but at this end i feel that i should write my story yeah. and writing my story it means lazima nisome yeah. asa hiyo kusoma ni very challenging sibi sibi nitafanya hadi but mungu yuko mm-hmm. mm. and how would you want kenyans to help you uh, if if i can get people of good will to stand with me or to support me uh, to to write my story through academics i would be very grateful because at this age i cannot say i will go back to the streets where i was i used to live i don't even think i have the energy to be a mom and be married again at this age secondly i don't have a place i can go home i don't have parents but through through uh, through education i think i can stand i can be empowered and i can stand on my feet mm-hmm. if i can get people of goodwill to support me to through fees help keep i know i shall i shall stand on my feet mm-hmm. i will be empowered mm-hmm. yeah and let us i really want to commend you for coming here and sharing your story it's very inspiring Thank and you. i know that people are going to learn from it mm-hmm. and the fact that you're building your life piece by piece is very very important for people to hear yeah. the thing is what's that thing that pushes you to be who you want to be in the future mm, first of all i get Uh, I get um, uh, touched by story of, uh, stories of women or girls who have, who have who have gone through what I've gone through. Mm-hmm. And I realize I'm not alone. When I was in high school, I'm telling you I have been in school as at age 40 and I was with students who are in 15 and they have been abused sexually maybe by people who are so close to the fam- who are, uh, so close to them and yet they cannot talk about it. Yeah. I want one day to be in a position to help those people who have gone through what I've gone through because I have experienced. I want to help somebody who is depressed, somebody who, is, who has a lot of bitterness, yeah. somebody who has been abused as a young girl. I want to be uh, in a position to help them, maybe to counsel them, maybe even to help them accept the way I was helped to accept because uh, the most uh, difficult thing it is is, uh, is to accept yeah. that indeed this is what has happened. And to be that position uh I need a chance to get some basic education and be able to uh, uh, to access the finances and the funding to be able to start that thing. Okay, and uh, how can people reach you? You can reach me on 0719270445. Mm. I send again uh, let me repeat 0719270445. My name is Glambis Gaki. Okay, na tukimaliza show one last word to your fans. Na you have a huge following <laughs> on social media and people yeah. also who are going to watch this. Utawaambia nini? Ah, thank you so much for hosting me uh, uh in Tuko show. I'm uh, really humbled. I know I know this this is going to is to inspire a lot of people and to my fans out there. Mimi I'm writing my story. Yeah. Whether the devil likes it or not. It must end well. I know this God who started this journey with me is going to see me to completion. Well, I cannot say challenges are not there, but I believe I shall make it in life. I shall finish well. Amen. And anybody out there who feels like maybe she or, or maybe she wants to go back to school, maybe a college 30, a college 25, a college 50, it is never too late to write your story. 
mean me only happen atao inaweza kukua penia there's nothing like age me have decided age is not going to limit me hata nikifikisha miaka 60 i will still rewrite my story mm-hmm. yeah and thank you so much for joining us today and i know you started this journey of writing your story and we shall write it with you sindio sisi kama tuko mm-hmm. and your fans out there tutashikana thank and you so take much. you through the journey sindio thank, thank you so much and to you our fans tuko family thank you so much for joining today's episode till next time let's keep it tuko talks <laughs> <laughs>